Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. First of all, before we get into the video, yes, the one I'm editing right now, I want to apologize because I know I normally release on a weekly basis, but I have a good reason. And that is I had some work done on my kitchen. So I have a new kitchen. Yes, there will be a video on that coming soon. But this particular video, ugh, I had to film it late at night. I think it was about one or two in the morning. I was very tired and I had to finish it off the following morning before they came to do the work because I had to start packing a lot of things out of the kitchen in preparation. So I put a lot of energy into this. <laughs> so enjoy the video and I'll see you guys soon. What's up everybody? This is Chemist Keeps Going. My name is Chemist and today I am going to show you how to make some really delicious apple, carrot and oat muffins. They're really quick and easy to make. They're nice and tasty and they're great if you're looking for something that's sweet but with a little bit of a healthy kick to it. So if you want to learn how to make them, stick with the video. Today we're going to be making the apple, carrot and oat muffins and what I wanted to say about these is that I love them. I think they are so great, they're tasty, they're easy to make and they're such a good staple. Everyone should have a few recipes that they cook and bake on a regular basis. And I feel that this particular recipe for these muffins, they're such a great grab and go snack. They're so convenient and so easy. And the fact that they're using fruits and vegetables and they're using less sugar and they're not using any butter, you know, it's a bonus. I'm gonna show you how to make them and I'm gonna run through all the ingredients with you. So keep watching. Let's take a look at the ingredients we'll be using today. Now, if you want to make this vegan friendly, then substitute the sugar, milk and eggs for vegan friendly alternatives. And in order to make this gluten free, you just need to substitute the flour for a gluten free friendly version. I'm going to start off by grating my apples and carrots. If you want to see a video with this particular appliance, the link is above. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna combine all of our wet ingredients, mix them all together, then I'm gonna combine all the dry ingredients, mix those all together, and then we'll put everything together so then the mix will be finally ready. I've got three eggs, as I said, you can use two large, I've used three medium, so they're going in there. Then I've got my milk, which is 120 milliliters, Then I've got oil. I'm using um, sunflower oil. So that, the oil is 120 milliliters also. And then finally, we've got some vanilla extract. Just gonna mix this together. So that's all mixed together now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all the dry ingredients into my stand mixer here, and then that will be ready. Once I've combined them all, it'll be ready for me to add the wet ingredients. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, that's absolutely fine. You can use a hand mixer. Um, whichever one you have to hand, not a problem. Let's get everything mixed together. To my stand mixer, I'm adding 280 grams of flour, 80 grams of rogue oats, 150 grams of light brown sugar, but you can use caster sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Next, I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking powder, and then half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Now that they're all together, I'm just gonna give them a quick mix so they're all incorporated nice and evenly. Now I'm going to add my wet ingredients to the dry and then I'll give it a mix. Now the most important thing with this is that you do not over mix it. You can mix the dry ingredients together as much as you like, but once you add the wet to the dry, please, please, please be cautious. Because if you over mix it, you're gonna end up with a very dense, very stodgy kind of mix. And when it bakes, it's not going to be very nice. So you wanna bake it just until it's all incorporated and then stop. So, I'm going to add my carrots and I'm going to add my apple. Go 
got my guard here now. I don't want the flour to go everywhere. So now that's all together, I'm gonna give this a quick mix. Okay, so that's all mixed together. So now I'm going to add my oil, milk and egg mix. And again, as I said, you do not want to overmix this because you don't want a stodgy, dense um, muffin. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate it into paper cases and then it's going to go into the oven. First, I'm putting my cases in the tray. I prefer to bake with cases. Next, you want to make sure that you evenly distribute your mix amongst all the cases. The more even they are now, the more evenly they'll bake and the more uniform they'll be. Also, do try and avoid spilling it everywhere, unlike myself. Now they're ready to put in the oven, you want to make sure you preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 360 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to want to bake these for anything from 15 to 25 minutes. It all depends on your oven, how much batter you have in your muffins. Mine are slightly thicker and deeper, so I've put them in for up to 25 minutes. Now that everything is baked, I've taken all of the muffins out of the oven and I've put them on the top here so that they can cool down a little bit. You want to make sure that initially you cool them down in the tray for about five to 10 minutes and then you can transfer them to the wire rack so they can cool down completely. Main reason being for this is the last little bit of residual heat will help to firm the base and get into the center. You're gonna use one of these, which is a cake tester. Okay, now my one is in the design of a cupcake, but basically it's a metal pin. Hold on, let's see, can you see that? Yeah, so it's a metal pin, um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop that in the center of whatever it is that you're baking, and then you're going to take it out, and you wanna check and make sure that it comes away clean. So if it comes away clean as this one has, then you know that the center of whatever it is that you're baking is actually baked. There's nothing worse than biting into a cake, cupcake, muffin, and it hasn't cooked all the way through. So I'm gonna transfer these to the wire rack, let them cool over night, and then we will taste them tomorrow. So I'm gonna have one for breakfast because it's gonna be a very busy day tomorrow because all of this will be gone and the new kitchen, well, the new look kitchen will be coming. It's the next day, everything is cooled down completely, so we're gonna give one of these a try. Okay, so those are great. Baking is like a science, and by that I mean the ingredients that you have need to be in the correct quantities in order to achieve the ultimate results. Now, with this particular recipe, and there's quite a few others, you can be flexible with your ingredients, but when you're going to be flexible, you should be flexible with your additional ingredients, not so much the base ingredients. Now, the additional ingredients in this are the, the fruit and vegetables, so that's the apple and the carrots, and then my seasoning, such as cinnamon and nutmeg. Now, you can change the apple and carrot for um, butternut squash or courgette or zucchini as some people call it, um, anything like that, so long as it's a very similar type of consistency and it does have some moisture in there, um, make sure that you keep them to the same, um, same portion size. So with these, I had 150 grams of the apple and 150 grams of the carrots, which was for my muffins, and that was for a batch of 12. Now, if you are making more or you're making less, you just increase or decrease the quantities that you need all throughout, and then you should be fine. With the spices, you can use anything that you want, such as ginger, cardamom, anything like that, um, just so long as whatever you are using, you don't over 
compensate. Make sure that if it's a strong spice or a strong flavor, no more than a teaspoon because then your bake is gonna taste of that flavor and it may not necessarily be so nice. The other thing is this recipe is, can actually be adjusted to be vegan friendly and to be gluten free. So you've got um, your flour, which you can change. So long as you are using flour, if you're not using self-raising, you can use plain flour, oat flour, rice flour, or gluten-free flour. You just need to make sure that you do have your raising agents. So that's bicarbonate of soda and baking powder. Um, if you want to make it a vegan friendly recipe, you just need to remove the eggs and you want to use an egg substitute because that's going to help with the binding process. And then in this recipe, I've also got milk and I have a intolerance. Well, I have a sensitivity to dairy, so I used almond milk. Now, if you don't have any problems with milk, you can use um, dairy milk. That's absolutely fine. Or you can use nut milks um, or other types of milk. So I used almond. You can use oat milk, which would give it like a, a slightly earthier flavor. Um, you could use rice milk, you could use soy milk, anything you know that you prefer to be honest. But just make sure whenever you are doing it, you're doing it with the correct quantities. Um, tweaking the recipe isn't going to affect it too much, but if you are removing some of the important elements in there, then you're not gonna get the results that you're looking for. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to try this recipe and then I want you to let me know how it turns out. And if you use any other ingredients or if you swap anything out, do let me know in the comments below what you used and how the re end results were. So, so that just leads me to say, like this video, subscribe to my channel and press that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I release new videos. So until the next time I see you guys, enjoy this recipe and let me know how your versions turn out. Take care, bye.